Marin went to LA, and Dorsey and LA were kind of like right, the middle right. class, yeah. And um, and I also relate to Barbara's experience about the counselors because clearly during that time um, they would guide you in very incorrect ways. There was a girl who's a, a mixed, uh, but she could pass for white, and. They told her not to hang out with us, not to hang out with any black people, and really, they did. And she refused, of course, but uh, they said, if you want to go to college, if you want to do this, or you want to do that, you know, don't hang out with them. Don't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, this, you know, I couldn't believe that a white counselor, but this was not unusual, that these counselors would just guide you and the worst possible. I had the possible. same thing at L.A. Hunt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, they told you that? Well, they didn't tell me that, but in general, mm -hmm. they were not helpful. No, no what I mean to say, but to say, hang out with uh, oh, white yeah. people so that you can get ahead. Don't hang out with black people. Yeah, I was uh, telling you that. No, but they didn't. Uh, they didn't put you in, a, in advanced classes, for right. example. Right. There was like mm -hmm. no real support. Yeah. Right, right. No, but I was thinking about the, 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 the other the fact yeah. that they yeah. actually yeah. tell no, somebody they did. to pass. Oh, yes. oh yeah, they, they did. did. Yeah. Yeah. They did. And at my time in, in Dorsey, that's when things were kind of shifting a bit. It what, was, and what time were we talking about? Uh, it was 1957, I think. Oh, yeah. And it, there it was like a little bit later than that. It was yeah. 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 Okay. 58, 59, 59, 59. I'm sorry. Yeah, but that was, so 59. You're saying that you like started around 59? Yes, I started around 59. And so there was like this shift happening. It was an all white school. And then it started shifting, you know, to Asian, black, and so on. And you had to have um, an address to get in there. You had to live in Lamert Park, you know, because that was the middle. And so we didn't live in Lamert Park, but we, of course, had an address that we used. So I was able to go. And it was such a, a, a stark difference between Fauché and the educational right. aspect of it, because in, at Dor I did have a few really wonderful teachers at uh, uh, black teachers actually at Fauche, but then they would like throw tomatoes at. The, I mean, right. yeah. it was rough. Everybody was desperate. Yeah, they. They. I mean, you. The teachers could barely get out alive. I mean, you know, it was. It was terrible. It was, yeah. So anyway, so Dorsey was. Unbelievably different. the The courses I took at Dorsey were actually harder than some of the courses that I took in college. I mean, they were, you know, just A plus teachers. But then, as the the uh, the population changed, shifted. some of those yeah, teachers, right. yeah, shifted out of there. But there was the interesting thing was Dorsey was set up like a pie, a half of a pie, and they had triangles. And they had the senior triangle, they had the multicultural triangle, and then they had the black triangle, and they had the white triangle. And so in the black triangle, it was, it was just wonderful because the brothers used to come with attache cases. <laughs> <laughs> they used to wear suits to school. And... Um, it had a very strong um, sorority and fraternity base at the school. And so they, the brothers would have like these wolfing sessions. And, are you familiar with that, you were saying? Oh, yeah. And so they wouldn't let any of us girls around. We had to be like, you know, on the side. And they get in a circle, incredibly tribal, get in a circle, and then they start playing the dozens. And they would talk about each other's mamas. And Every time someone would, you know, just get way, you know, messed up, then they'd have to leave. And then it would get smaller and smaller and smaller. So this is what would happen, you know, in the Black Triangle. So uh, I also um, went to uh, uh, James, well, it's mostly James Truett. My classes were with James Truett and Yvonne Delavalai at uh, Lester Horton mm -hmm. Studio. Yeah, but Lester Horton had died by the time I got there. And so I, I've consistently had this kind of dance 
background. I, I honestly don't know where I got the passion or the desire, but uh, it was it's something that's consistent in my life, this issue of movement. And what years were, were you there? I mean, you guys didn't overlap at all? Well, I don't think so. I don't know. No, we didn't overlap in the dance classes. Mm -hmm. right. What years were you there? I'm trying to think. It was I think it was in high school because I had to take the bus to get there, and uh, you know this was Hollywood, and I remember taking the bus and seeing these old women on the bus that had all of this makeup that looked like maybe they had uh, been uh, extras in yeah. movies or something. Right. Hollywood you know? bug. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just very interesting experience coming from the black community, you know, to Hollywood, and. Um, Let's see what else. You said uh, coming from the black community, and where exactly were you living? Um, we lived uh, on uh, 65th and Vermont, mm -hmm. between Vermont and Normandy. Um, we lived uh, uh, like around Normandy, uh, just Norman, uh, what's that question? Is that Adams? No. Is that Adams? Adams and Jefferson. Yeah. Normandy and Adams. Yeah. All in that little area there. Which is only where I grew up for one year anyway. Yeah. Yeah. And Horton was in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. was in Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. Melrose. Uh, yeah. And then. And Melrose and uh, uh, La Cienega? Somewhere in that area. Yeah. And then I also went to. Uh, I also took dance at um, a community school, a community center on Jefferson, and I don't, you know, it might have been close to Dorsey. Hmm. Um, yeah, so then, um, oh, when I was in elementary school, uh, I made a little dog, and my teacher was so excited about this dog that uh, they had a, a, a uh, assembly and they had four of us up there you know I don't know somebody was reciting poetry and so on and so on. and I had to talk about this dog that I had created out of clay so that was my first experience mm -hmm. talking about my work yeah. <laughs> in, elementary <laughs> in elementary school and uh, then I went to Pasadena uh, junior college because they had an excellent art program and I was very excited about going there. However, uh, I guess racism <laughs> raised its ugly head. How did, how did you know that you wanted to be an artist? Uh, I don't know. I honestly, you know, when you were talking, I was trying to figure out where, <laughs> where did these interests come from? I really don't know. My mother was, there was no one uh, and my family that was an artist, I had an uncle that gave me my first uh, coloring set and the closest he got to art was he had, uh, you know those paintings that have the dogs playing cards? He loved those, so that was my first experience with a painting was these dogs playing cards. So I, I really don't know. My, I, I know now that part of who I am came from my mother because even though she wasn't uh, artistic in certain ways, she loved um, presenting, uh, being the hostess, and you know she would uh, change. Uh, even though we all had, you know, we had a very modest uh, uh, income always, she would change the entire house every three or four years. You know, change the upholstery, change the. The uh, carpet changed, the you know the draperies, everything, uh, and she just loved to present. I mean, that's all you can say. Present, you know. If, if we uh, if money was rough, she would uh, you know make beans and rice, but she would serve them in silver and uh, cut glass and champagne. You know, she always served champagne, so it was always about that. And even the places she worked, you know, uh, she worked at um, uh, Dorothy, Dorothy something uh, in Bullock's, in Bullock's Wilshire, and it was all glass. And 
she just loved, you know, the finer things. Anyway, so I think that's this issue of installation and so on, that, you know, she created a total environment when people would come in. And aesthetics, too. No? Yes, I mean, oh, yeah. Her aesthetic presentation. Oh, absolutely. So then I went, okay, so I was in PPCC. Um, everybody black they knew did not, you know, you had to be a resident. And so again, I was, we found people, you know, whose addresses we could use. Well, they would investigate you. And if you weren't, you know, if that wasn't really your address, then they'd kick you out. So I only spent one semester in uh, PPCC. I really did want to, I really wanted to stay there instead of going to UCCS. So, I mean, UC, uh, Cal State LA. And so I had to transfer to Cal State LA. And while I was there, um, you know, I had to decide art or dance. And clearly, even if I was the best dancer in the world, I knew that that was a limited experience, that you could only be a professional for so long. So um, art, I knew I could do until, you know, I was 108. So um, that's why I chose art as a major and dance as a minor. And while I was there, um, in the uh, summer, probably, uh, there were um, dance uh, things like at UCLA and, and Bennington. And uh, my dance teacher there was Murray Lewis, who was from uh, New York. And Murray Lewis uh, uh, collaborated uh, always with Alvin Nikolai. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with Alvin, Alvin Nikolai, are you? Mm -hmm. And so Alvin Nikolai, besides being a musician, uh, always incorporated the arts uh, in his uh, in his presentation. So I had that experience, even though Alvin Nikolai didn't uh, come that often. Murray Lewis, you know, was his collaborator and quite a taskmaster. So when I was uh, at uh, Cal State, I got a job at um, Pasadena Art Museum as an assistant teacher and at Watts Towers Art Center uh, as, you know, a teacher. And those were totally pivotal experiences for me, totally pivotal experiences for me, because there was such rigorous energy in both places. And Pasadena Art Museum was the most amazing place, and if they haven't, they should really write a history of Pasadena Art Museum. Are you guys familiar with it at all? A little bit from yeah. from histories. Okay, yeah. because it was it was it was totally experimental, totally. It started out in a small building that was very Asian. It was uh, Asian architecture, and they had the the blue four in there. They had original blue fours in there. Uh, Paul Clay and da da da, and um, uh, Jim Dine, um, you name it. Keen holds all these people, you know, had their work there. They were like the big people, and so they would have these incredible happenings, and you know, dance and music and painting and everything. And we'd take the kids through the gallery, and they would dance in front of the the canvases. So it was just rigorous and exciting, but it was equally exciting in, in Watts. Because at that point, you know, that was before they had Watts Towers Art Center. And the uh, Watts uh, Tower Center, I should, I guess you might call it, was what they called the White House because it was just a little um, house. And, and the, um, the art classes would happen in this little tiny house. And then we would go to kind of the burned out area of, uh, the uh, actual Watts Towers and play in there and so on. So, uh, and then Noah Purefoy was there, um, uh, Judson uh, Powell was there, and Noah was just amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was just out there. Mm -hmm. And he was just as out there as the people in Pasadena, mm -hmm. but it was two different things, you know. So I was really lucky in, in being able to, you know, balance these two worlds and being influenced by these two worlds. Um, Can you just say a little bit about the 
say a little bit about your graduate school and then we'll, we'll stop and go on to Ulysses and okay. pick up a little bit more. Okay. Well, I went to, um, uh, I got my BA in uh, 66 and then I went immediately to uh, Japan for a year. And part of that was because, and I don't know why, I think I love dance so much, but I knew that I could not be in a dance world because besides, uh, you know, the body thing, besides the skill, technical thing, I was always dancing differently than other people. So they kept saying, well, you have to be in the group. You know? <laughs> I could never quite accomplish that. <laughs> but there was such a, you know, a joy of movement. So I, I I remember getting this book on Japanese contemporary art and I wasn't impressed with the the paintings as much because it just seemed like a copy of what was happening in America. But when I saw the Gutai group, I said, oh my gosh, this is it. This is what I want. This is what I'm thinking. And that was my reason for going to Japan. I really wanted to find them, which I never did. Um, but I, I was totally influenced by their work, and I was totally influenced by this issue of everything coming, everything working together, the gestalt kind of thing. And I just, you know, and, and then in um, Watts, it was the, uh, the poets. Yeah, was that during, right after the riots? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Watch Kamau, yeah, and you know Kamau and people like that. Yeah, all of these, you know, that was happening in in Watts as well. All, all you know, everybody was coming together to, you know, try and make something out of the rubble that had happened, and everybody was doing it uh, in a collaborative sense as well as. Um, you know, uh, separately looking at our art differently and seeing how, you know, it can expand beyond the, uh, the European concepts and modes. So let's just start up with that next okay. time so we can expand into Watts. So we can ask mm -hmm. you a little bit more about Japan. Okay. Don't yeah. 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 But we're, we're going to start with Ulysses while, while Jim is out of the room, and please uh, <coughs> begin. Okay. Uh, it's kind of interesting listening to all of you guys about histories, because we all have similar kind of mm -hmm. histories in different points of uh, intersection. Okay. Um, I was born in Los Angeles in uh, 1946. Um, which at the time, and even today, I mean, they, they, it has been called South Central LA, and now they just call it Central LA, you know, everybody's got a new name for L, for the place where black folks are, uh, live. But um, for the most part, um, as Mary mentioned when she was born, I was born in, in Hoover General, uh, <laughs> that even exists now. Yes, uh, uh, it's, it, it's, it's all around, 60 something in, in Hoover or, or late, you know, about that, about that way. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course my family sort of settled, like most black families in that era, you know, near Central Avenue. And of course my father uh, was a barber who had a shop, had a barber shop on Central Avenue. Mm -hmm. So for whatever I know of, uh, he was probably in the middle of a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. And my mom didn't like it. But anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Were they from, not from LA? Were no, they no, of course, like most, most uh, people of their generation, they gravitated from the South. Mm -hmm. And my mom was from Louisiana. Uh, we did have relatives, uh, you know, that, that originated out of New Orleans. But uh, my mom's family was in the central part of, this, of the state of Louisiana, a little small town called LeCount which uh, was right outside of Alexandria. That's oh. where my folks are from, yeah. Alexandria. Oh my God. Okay. Alexandria. Interesting. Wow. Uh -huh. So you know, huh. all down there by that hanging tree place. But yeah. anyway. Uh, <laughs> 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 we all have the tree. You know? Right, <laughs> right. What about but, your dad? But my dad was from Texas. Okay. 
And my dad was from a small little place called Omaha, Texas, which was uh, near Fort Worth, uh, in Fort Worth, Dallas area. And, um, you know, uh, my mom, of course my mom's family came to L.A., uh, you know, looking for a better life and what have you. Um, just a quick thing about my mom's family, which you'll catch up with later, of course, is that my mom's mother was the librarian in, in that little town. And, they, and the library was right across the street mm -hmm. from their house. Oh. So when I was a kid, she'd go to work and take me with her, and I'd be in this library running around with all these books and everything, you know, and I, she'd just let me, uh, you know, look at whatever, or, you know, whatever I wanted. And so I guess to a certain degree, and for the most part, my mom, my, uh, my grandmother's family was really looked upon as one of the more educated families, uh, just from the standpoint that they all got an education, they pretty much, a lot of them did all go to college, and uh, like my, my mother's oldest brother, he would go around and read the newspaper to all the old folks. And he actually became, uh, at the time, it was sort of extraordinary, uh, 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 was it? Yeah, a captain in the, in the army in World War II. Uh, so that was my mom's family. And then my dad's family, they were on a farm and uh, of course, um, they they were pretty well respected in their in their little small town. And of course, um, my dad ended up leaving because uh, I think as it was, yeah, he kicked this white guy's ass, and so he had to leave town. Mm -hmm. So it was a apocryphal tale. Yeah, <laughs> and so he came west uh, from that experience, and then eventually went into the service. So they met in L.A., uh, and uh, as my dad would say, my mom was skipping rope down the street, and he said, who's this girl? And he started talking to her. So um, the funny thing about, their, about the two of them, and, and, and in terms of this, like I said, my dad, he was a barber, and my mom at, initially went to, went to school to be a hairdresser. So there's you know, this whole thing uh, in common that they had there, I guess. So, you know, from that point, we lived on the, in, 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 um, uh, out there in East LA, uh, 40, on 43rd Place near Central, actually uh, right off of Central, right around, not too far from the Dunbar, actually, mm -hmm. it turned out. I didn't know anything about the Dunbar when I was a kid, but that's, that's where we lived. And we lived there until about nine and a half, almost 10. And when we moved to what was then called the West Side, um, the West Side being near La Cienega and Jefferson. And of course, that's on the border of LA and Culver City. Um, and so, because of that, where that, that particular area I lived and it was integrated, um, you know, we, we were like the, the third black family on the block that we lived in. It was like moving in with the Nelsons, right? <laughs> and so um, it, it, you know, and, and so there was a lot of things that came from that sort of experience, because it was the, the '50s. It was the height of integration, the integration that was happening in, in that part of town in LA, and um, you know, we had I had quite a few, you know, interesting experiences after living in, you know, living on. Other side of town, where it's mostly uh, a black community. Uh, to, I'll just give an example. One of my one of my friends who was happened to be white. You know, we used to walk to school together, and we walked home one day, and I I went to his house, and his mom immediately says, "You tell that boy to stay outside." <laughs> and so, when I got home. And I told my mom about it, and my mom being the great so, uh, sociologist that she had to become, uh, she said, well, don't worry about it. If he comes over to your house, he can come in. <laughs> and so from that, you know, a lot of the experiences that I was having uh, were to sort of formulate, I guess you would say, the way I started to see the world. But to get back to this thing, I remember when, I, I remember about you was asking, like, how did you become an artist? When I was young, and I remember one Sunday, my dad was doodling. 
on some paper uh, on Sunday, uh, you know, after Sunday dinner. And I thought, wow, that looks great. Let me take a shot at it. <laughs> and so I started drawing from that standpoint. And, that, and so that when we moved over to the, to the other side of town in this integrated situation where I, I, I'm always already shy. And there I was now in this situation where you've got all these eyes on you and all these other circumstances that come with that situation. Um, drawing became a good outlet for me. And it was a way for me to get my drawings on the board. And I could do what I thought, well, hey, I could, I could be recognized without having to put myself out there. And so, uh, so I, I pursued drawing in my early art career, as a matter of fact, or, or painting eventually. Uh, and of course, going through school at that time, watching the great phenomena of the pop culture, you know, because I just could not understand what was wrong with all these white girls going crazy over Elvis Presley. Yeah. <laughs> I just said, what is this? they would just be beyond themselves, you know? <laughs> and so, you know, we just tripped out on it. And uh, so that by the time that uh, we got into junior high school and then eventually high school, um, these pop phenomena that, if you, as, as it were, would happen. But then there was these other things that were happening, of course, uh, that you were trying to always try to, see I was all, always had to negotiate, because it was interesting that you were talking about the schools that you went to. Mm -hmm. which, which one? I went to, okay, I, I went to Marvin Avenue School, mm -hmm. which is now, um, uh, you know, right next to the, to the 10, because when I grew up, they were, when I grew up, they were, they were building the 10 freeway. Mm -hmm. We used to cross it, we used to walk over it mm -hmm. to go to school, because when they built, put it in, they cut us off from just going, walking straight to school. And um, so I went to Marvin, then I went to Pasteur. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, and then Pasteur was really trippy because, you know, the, the integration thing that was happening was the black families were moving in. Uh, most of the, the community that we lived in and around was Jewish. And so it was black families and a maybe a smattering at that time of Latino families and, and, and a few Asians. And then when we get to junior high, that equation, uh, it started to change a little because being, we lived in this, well, in this optional district somewhat, uh, because when we went to Pastor, our arrival junior high was Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. So we used to always hear about Mount Best Vernon Best. and Fauché. Okay. And of course. <laughs> no, but it was Mount Vernon a black school? Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. But my, yeah, and, and, but, and Mount Vernon, of course, was as far as its uh, high school that it was attached to was LA High. But you see, and so today, you know, in, in today's world, when they talk about gangs, see that, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a guy, we had to be always aware of what was happening with that whole situation. And in my community, I was lucky that the guys who were involved in that kind of activity, um, they sort of nurtured us. Because, of course, when you talk about Adams, mm -hmm. see, Adams was the big boulevard. Mm -hmm. And when you went on Adams, anything and everything was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so this guy used to sort of like get us ready. He says, look, you guys are going to be out here, so you need to know how to defend yourself. So we got all that kind of defensive, mm -hmm. you know, community defense stuff, mm -hmm. where basically uh, this guy would uh, train us to beat each other up. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, that, so that when somebody else would attack you, you would know how to number one, you know how to take a punch, and you know how to come and support each other. Yeah, it was, you know, it was, it was like uh, going to, uh, you know, like what they basic call it, basic training. Yeah, basic training in the military, yeah. right? But now, is this high school or does it start? With this is high? this starts this starts in elementary school going up, okay. because by the time you get to junior high, the formulation of gangs is real. And there was like there was the bartenders, <laughs> and uh, the Crips, and, and 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 the blood thing came later. But the Crips was there because the Crips used to show up. And a matter of fact, um, when I was in high school, we went to a party, which of course, like you were saying, you know, back in those days, you go to a party, man, you dressed. Totally. Yeah, I mean, you wasn't gonna get no girls if you weren't dressed. <laughs> so you know, you have on your suit, you have your Sunday suit, you know, and you'd be looking really crisp. 
And then, of course, you know, while you're there doing that, the gangs are circling the party. That's true. Their cars are bouncing. That's true. And, you know, they're looking to, you know, kick some feet, kick some ass. But anyway, um, and this, this one particular party we were at, and it was really cool, you know, the, every, everybody's this family, the girls had the, had the family room in the backyard and the, and, the, and the garage, and everybody was there dancing, and the lights were low, and then all of a sudden, boom, this dude goes flying across the room, his lights come on, oh these dudes gosh. are standing in their trench coats talking about, the bartenders are here, we're here to kick some ass. And so it was like, okay, what you gonna do now? Because they blocked all the entrances on the exits, Exits, and so the thing is, they got through the front. Somebody wasn't, you know, on the, on it at the door. So I remember it was me and my brother. We figured out how to get out of that garage, got over the fence, and we were we were hitting it. Run. I mean, you know, I was an athlete when I was a kid, anyway. So that was part of just running, right? But this one crazy friend of mine, he's, you know, I ain't taking this. I'm going back. I said, man, you don't want to do that. And of course, he ended up dead that night. Oh. You know, and I said, man, who are you going to save? These dudes got guns. Come on. Anyway. And so this was in the 50s? No, no, no. This was in this was the early 60s. Early 60s. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, went to, I went to high school in, in, in 60. So what school did you go to? Oh, I was So I went to, from Pastor to Hamilton. Oh, oh my goodness. See, yeah. see so, so from one yeah. integrated school to, to, to one even minor, less, less right. integrated school. I mean, matter of fact, there was... When I first went to Hamilton, there was like 25 of us in the whole school, and we knew one of us was absent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, because we all met at the same place to sort of support each other. You know, because it was it was definitely a cultural kind of adventure uh, doing that at that time. Um, but um, at the same time, you know, and, and of course during that whole time, as far as my arts was concerned, I was taking art classes, and. Um, I was pretty always used to kind of recognize that I had some skills, and when I got to when I when I got to Hamilton, see, I still wasn't. See, I didn't understand this whole thing about fine art yeah. and commercial art, and so I could under. And the thing is, like you, was, one of you was saying about the, the training the other kids were going. You know, I'm taking this art class, and these kids are telling me about going to the taking class at the county, and their parents are taking them to this and taking them to that, and I'm going like, shit, man, I'm just girl, I got, I'm walking to school. My parents ain't taking me nowhere. <laughs> so uh, like that. On the cultural tip, but um, so in your art class, uh, was it half and half? Was it half athletes and half artists that really wanted to be there? Not really. Oh, okay. Not really. No, no. <laughs> that was I mean, I was one of the athletes, but I should say, yeah, because I was on. Uh, I was on. The, I, I ran. Uh, I ran track. I played football, and uh, and I guess because of that, when you were saying that they had sororities and stuff mm -hmm. at, at Dorsey. Mm -hmm. See, they had that thing in Hamilton, but of course, there weren't any black kids in them. And then a, a friend of mine got in one, and then eventually, I think that me and that, so then eventually me and this other friend of mine, who, to, because we were good athletes, we qualified to get, to get pledged. And so uh, that was really, really crazy, of, of course, because here I'm being pledged in this, in this club, where, you know, all of our, let's say, club brothers, they all live down here in, the, you know, in, 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 in sort of like the, uh, the Beverly Glen community. I mean, you know, you know Hamilton is on Robertson Boulevard. Beverly Glen or something. Yeah, there's all those woods over there. So, uh, <laughs> so you know, you get taken to these houses, man, and it's like something you've never seen before, right? And then, of course, some of the dudes weren't exactly wanting you in this club. But they were going along with it because socially it was the thing to do, to, to integrate. And so that's what was happening. We were the integration factor. Mm -hmm. And um, So how does that relate? I'm trying to speak to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going off. You got to do it. glad you're doing that. Okay. Uh, how does this relate to you get to the next stage? With okay, college? what happens? Where did you go? And, uh, yeah, so what happens is I end up leaving when I graduate from Hamilton. My family sends me to the South, and I go to a whole totally different direction. I'm going to Southern University in Baton Rouge during the, during the height of integration. And, uh, and I'm majoring in art when I'm down there. And uh, so I have a whole flip, if you will, of the script, and culturally a flip of the script. And uh, for the most part, you know, 
uh, the brothers down there thought there was something wrong with us because of the way we talk. <laughs> you know, you don't sound like a black person. Right. And this is mid '60s. Yeah, this is like 1964, right after the Civil Rights Law was passed. You know, and I had this wonderful experience on the train in Houston, where the, uh, this white guy asked me to pick up his bags. And you know, I'm 17, I'm wild, and I'm saying, "Man, you must be crazy. I'll never carry your shit again in life." And he has a tantrum in the Houston train station, and I'm not being smart enough to realize I could have got hung for laughing at him in the train station. But, you know, that was, um, we had a lot of really, we got chased out of the, out of the state capitol in Baton Rouge because we went on the wrong day. I mean, you know, it's all that wonderful stuff. And um, so, and, but the thing that happened, I'm glad you asked that question, because what happened for me when I was in un undergraduate school and I was majoring in art and I was majoring in painting, and um, I had a couple of experiences, one with an art his history teacher where, I felt he wasn't really teaching us. All he was doing was giving us tests without, you know, backup uh, readings. And I, I stood up. And this is where my whole thing starts off for me. I stood up and said, you know, I don't think that you're like too relevant. So when I said that, all the other students who were wanting to say it jumped up and said it too. And so we all flunked. <laughs> and so that was the beginning of my my revolutionary uh, sort of self in a certain way. What were, you, what were you thinking when you, when you said not too relevant? How are you using that term? What, what do you mean? You mean in that? terms of the teacher? Yeah. Well, the thing was, he, he would give you tests on stuff that you hadn't even been told to read. Oh, okay. So just generally. Yeah. The and, then he, and then he played that old school, don't, don't, don't question me, just do as I say. And I, you know, you know, growing up in a black family, after a while, you sort of get tired of that. And I figured this was part of my, my whole thing anyway, is that, I wanted to be. I wanted to be, make my own life. I mean, that was the only thing that got me to actually accept going to the South because I could get away from some of the parental influences that my mom was throwing on me. Well, I'm wondering about. I mean, this is '64, um, and this is an art history class. Right. Um, what kind of art history was this? Like a survey? Thing? Just regular, you know, chance. Okay, okay, okay. But I mean, were you were you looking at that point for some information about art that? Indeed, felt more relevant to your own experience. Well, of course, the whole you know, the whole the whole civil rights movement was all around you. I mean, we, I mean, uh, who was that uh, came to campus? Um, I don't know, this is always happens. No, no, no. It's the brother who uh, he was with King and split off, and uh, uh, Albert. Stokely comes. Yeah, Stokely, oh, Stokely. Stokely, comes. Stokely, Stokely comes, and, and when Stokely Steve. comes, and yeah, Stokely comes and turns the campus out. Mm -hmm. The campus turns out because we were pissed off with the black administration for coming down, you know, mm -hmm. to to the uh, state government, and and you know, it, just a bunch of little kind of silly things now today, but you know, were big then. And then of course, then the state police come, and um, the campus is blocked off. And then not after that, you know, the Klan comes and they burn their crosses. So, you know, it was just that wonderful time in the South. <laughs> sleepy time in the South, but it wasn't sleepy. Were you shocked by all that? Or not you been, really. You know, your time in L.A. prepared you for this, quote unquote, or were you seeing it on TV? We were seeing all this stuff on TV. I've actually, when I started to go to school down there, I was like, I was a little concerned because, you know, there was a whole bunch of stuff that happened in 64 in the South that uh, let you know that you weren't just going to some kind of nice social movement. And uh, at the, but, but you know, it really sort of, like I said, sort of flipping the script. And I mean, you know, I mean, Spike caught it perfectly in school days, man. We go out in the hood and they were like, oh, you college ends and you know, and all this kind of stuff. And you know, you gotta say, okay, if I don't get my ass kicked out here in the hood getting a hot dog, you know, I'll get an education. And um, so you yeah, had those kind of experiences, but in terms of how it informed, you know, in terms of your art, yeah, you know, we were making work that we were trying to say something in regards to the movement as well. And of course, what I found out, you know, from those experiences coming back to LA after undergraduate school was that wasn't going to get you in graduate school because I did. I mean, I did try to get into UCLA, and of course, I mean, I wasn't. Really, I and mean, that certain thing that you were saying, Barbara, you don't have to go into school in, in, in Louisiana. There's a certain, some kind of deficit that you 
get with the way that yeah that, that you got to do. I had to take extra classes to to get into a graduate school at some point when I tried to get into Cal State LA before they turned into a university. They had to do what you went to, you went to there. You got to take these classes that you didn't get down there. But for the most part, uh, all of those things actually sort of inform you to what you eventually are going to do. And um, so for the most part, when I couldn't get into uh, UCLA, I just thought, okay, I gotta, I gotta do it some other way. So that's how I ended up going into the mural movement. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. well, I didn't really get into UCLA in sculpture, okay. which I applied in. I got into the design department, and laterally. Right. And, I, and I think uh, Ulysses brought up a huge point, although it was kind of a toss away point, about Jansen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that with all of us, I think it was an issue of omission. We did not see ourselves uh -huh. in that book. And that was the main book that everybody used for art history. Right. In your, and there was nothing there. There was n nothing that indicated that we had a legacy at the time. And it's uh, basically, it's only now that that's really happening. And um, Did that affect you? Did you say, oh, well, yes. this is wrong? Oh, well, this is I, it, Go ahead. Uh, it affected me because, you know, I've had this French thing going on. I had French in uh, high school, and I took one semester <laughs> in uh, college. And, and so I would like, because I wanted one of the reasons I wanted to speak French is because I wanted to be able to read art books mm. about African art. Okay. And because they were, at that point, they were all in French. Most of them were in French. So I'm looking at these books, and with my broken French, I am seeing the cruelest, I mean, literally tears would come to my eyes mm. when I would read those texts and, and see how they were talking about Africans. I mean, even now it makes me cry because it was just the worst thing in the world. And with Picasso, you know, they asked him, well, what do you think about African art? Because, you right. know, and he says, what art? Mm -hmm. Now, this is a man <laughs> that yes. I adore. I mean, that was the only, you know. Yeah, and he made his whole career his on His whole that. career right. on that. What he called was an art. Yes. Right. Right. And for him, it was a toss away thing, you know. Well, so this, these, these were crushing things that I think we all have in common. This, this sense of omission. Well, that was the whole thing. See, and and, and, at, and at Southern, the the style of painting that they taught was impressionism. Mm -hmm. uh, the chair, that's what his his style. So everybody else adopted it. But there was one brother there from Chicago named John Payne, mm -hmm. and he's the one who saved me really. Mm -hmm. Because after I went through that experience in our history, I was saying, I'm out of here. Because my little revolutionary thing was saying, I don't care who you are. I mean, you know, I, I feel like the my whole generation is rebelling against this generation. So I'm going to rebel too. And, uh, and he just told me, look, you know, you can either accept this as a defeat or you can overcome it and figure out what you want to do with it. Because to whatever degree, you can't just displace this. You have to work your way through it. And that was like my first real understanding of what it would take to become an artist and to actually take on the kind of ideas that were, were coming in my head. Um, and so when I left Southern and I tried to get into UCLA and that didn't work out, I tried to get into Otis because Charles White was there. Right. And because my style of actually drawing, uh, I attributed to my you know, really my, my, my appreciation of, of Charlie's work and I really I really like that style. And of course the thematic the themes that were in his work. And of course um, I tried to get in, I got I got accepted actually, and then my mom was paranoid about the whole thing of uh, when they check your, your your financial stuff. Because I guess she was doing a little thing on the books that might have been not right. I'll leave it at that. And so she wouldn't, so she wouldn't sign the papers. So I, I just said, Mom, you're just killing my career. So I left and moved to Hawaii. Oh, wow. Now, I'm not going to go into the Hawaii life, although it, it was wonderful. But um, it, did, it did help me uh, sort of figure out more of what I wanted to do 
and of course what I saw there in terms of what was happening to the Hawaiian people mm -hmm. and uh, this whole colonial, this post-colonial relationship with the U.S. Mm -hmm. I said, damn, this is the same thing that's happening to black folks. Mm -hmm. So it just sort of, you know, because I saw the whole Hawaiian culture being pimped mm -hmm. and, you know, the money that they were making and the whole thing. So when I came back, I was ready to get in. And when I applied the next time, my mom said, go right in. <laughs> How many years this, have passed? Um, let's see, that was... How many years were you in Hawaii? I was in Hawaii for about two and a half years. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, and I was, I was doing drawings and stuff over there, uh, pastel work and stuff, because it's hard to do stuff over there with the humidity and everything. But the thing, of course, before I um, had gone over there is that I had lived in Venice and I had this career as a, as a muralist. Uh, post going to graduate school. And so in that sense, I had a career as a muralist, but then when I came back, and I'd also started shooting video when I was in Venice. As a matter of fact, I was in Venice when the beginning of uh, video was being introduced in Southern California that way, on the boardwalk. Was Spark established No, see that was the beginning of Spark when I started painting murals. I was, paint I was working with Judy Baca at the time. Maybe we should stop here sure. and then we'll have some lunch and we'll come back and we'll start with you talking about murals and Okay, yeah, because I go into that into grad school and then out. Okay. okay. Right, right, right. Great. Thank you. Woo! Yeah. We've had a lot of experience. Yeah. yeah. But everybody's really yes. keeping it moving because <laughs> get everybody to the